All right, here we go, guys. Now we're live. Let's do this. So I started doing this painting. Um, it's a marshland. I started doing this a little bit earlier, so I apologize for not including you guys in the game early on. <laughs> so here we go. I'm doing this on a masonite board. This is a, a jazz soap masonite board. I was trying to be a bit of a purist there, but uh, it's not my fitting really. I'd rather buy the canvas and not work on it. Have it already, uh, have it ready to paint. That's the kind of stuff I used to do when I started painting. Sort of uh, prepare the grounds and all that kind of stuff. Still works though for those of you who want to do it. I mean, it's, it's a great way of making sure that you have a, a good surface to paint on. So this is a bit more abstract. I'm using a, a large palette knife here with a brush. And uh, it's super fun. There's different things you can do. The, the harder the surface, I think the more the more you can experiment with different uh, tools and different types of paintings. This is why masonite is uh, such a preferred surface for for abstract expressionists and that type of artists. You can do different stuff with it. So I'm going to go back and forth with the brush and the palette, the palette knife. Dry piece of paint. Using palette knife is a really, it's a surefire way of using up all your paint. <laughs> Those of you who are like, man, I gotta save my paint. If you're, if you're stingy with your paint, you're gonna regret using palette knife. I love, I love going back and forth with them, but I don't, I don't use palette knife, not because of the paint. I don't, I don't mind using the paint. That's what it's for. But I, I tend to be a, a bit faster and more spontaneous with the brush. Especially in certain subjects. Figurative work and stuff that is not necessarily landscape, I tend to be more spontaneous with, with a brush than a palette knife. Since I have to be drawing the figure. That, that helps a lot. So I'm going to go back and forth with the brush. Here we go. Some artists like doing uh, soft or, or, yeah, I would, I would call it soft. Soft brushing and then going and adding some texture. Those art nerds out there, uh, impasto, right? You guys love those words. <laughs> I was, uh, I, was, I was having a, a private showing of my work not, a few years back, not too long ago. And I always, I always found, that, found that interesting, right? Uh, that that uh, artists like using terms, but many of the collectors don't, don't really, it's not their thing, right? It's not because they, they're not educated on the subject, or it's just not their thing. So I was explaining, I was talking about uh, one of my pieces and I had an artist friend, and all he kept saying was, was uh, using like this, you know, hoity-toity art terms, right? He's like, spumato. <laughs> I 
visual weight and all this shit that really uh, a lot of the a lot of the patrons collectors they don't they don't really they don't really talk like that they don't really care about that usually people that like you know they, they like to read about that kind of stuff but they're not necessarily collectors. So I try not to use my, in Spanish we call them uh, uh, Sunday words. <laughs> call them Sunday words. And you, have a, you, you have a cool word you want to use, you want to show off, it's a Sunday word. You wait till Sunday, till you're all dressed up and, and then you can use that word if you want to. Look at that. Ain't it cool? The whole trick of, of painting with loose brush, guys, is to not stop moving. I know, I know, uh, I just stressed this enough, and uh, but there's new people showing up, so to the streams, so I gotta, I gotta remind them in case you forgot, and, and I gotta tell the new people when you're when you're painting loose brush work. It's, it's, uh, the kiss of death is to, is to stop. I guess that's life in general, right? Who said that, uh, Albert Einstein said that the, the balance of, of life was like riding a bicycle. You gotta keep pedaling, you gotta keep moving. It's the same thing with art. The moment that you stop and you start, see, because every time that you stop, you're gonna try to, you're, the brain does something. It's, it, you're cutting the flow, first of all. Let's take it a little bit esoteric. You're cutting the flow. But the next thing that you do is that you start thinking. You start thinking. You start measuring another word, another fancy word for that is you start, you create judgment, right? You start creating judgment. So that, what happens is that even if you love what you're doing, you're gonna hate it. Spend, spend enough, enough time doing something that you love. If, if, if you're not, if you don't keep moving, you're gonna hate it because there is a, there's a part of us that just wants to judge the situation. I don't know why it's, I don't know if it's just, it's mechanical or whatever, but I, I see that this is the kiss of death when painting. I know artists, as I'm, as I'm showing them uh, how to do this loose brush work deal, they want to stop and they want to walk back and look at it and then start thinking. But the next thing you know, you start thinking about the colors. I have a rule. If you wait on it even three seconds, you're going to find the reason why it's just, it's just fucking ugly. You're going to, you're going to try to just, you're going to try to destroy it. You're going to try to walk away from it. Or you're going to say what many artists say, oh, I'll come back to it and, and just live with that painting for years and years and never really exhibit it or sell it or get it out of the studio this happens a lot i think that this is one of the reasons why a lot of artists don't create beautiful work but don't don't really don't necessarily show it and it's because there's too much thinking about the artwork so i try not to do that i try to just keep moving palette knives are so fun <laughs> Hey, thank you so much, Our Outlook Insight. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Very cool. Yeah, I got a good crowd. You guys are cool. Thank you so much. Uh, whist whistle, whist whist whistle pig? <laughs> I'm addicted to your work. Love it. Thank you. A beautiful artist is never stingy with the paint. I love that. Yeah, guys, next time you feel stingy with the paint, just think of Van Gogh. Van Gogh drove his brother nuts, sending him uh, lots of paint. Uh, you need paint, guys. You need paint. You need you need to use lots of it. I, I, I don't I don't know what there's there's all sorts of new trends where people are talking about economy of brushwork, economy of paint. And I think that's that's really cool. But if you're not careful, what happens is that you're, you, you'll, you'll miss the point and, and, and try to become a minimalist where, you, where you, the whole thing about minimalism, less is more, it's not necessarily about, about materials, guys. It's, it's about 
getting to a place where we used to say this. Uh, I I I, uh, I grew up working with with um, a family of remodelers. My brothers were all into remodeling homes and whatnot, and. Uh, and we used to have this little song. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I had to take that call. Apologize for the inconvenience here, but it is part of the deal. Oh, getting back to that, we used to say, well, I grew up with, with uh, people that used to remodel homes, and they still do. A couple of them still do. And we used to say, if you're... If you don't if you don't get it dirty, you're not working when you're starting, right? Let me say this. But if but if you've been at it for a while and you're dirty, um, I don't know how to translate it. If you've been at it for a while and, and, and you're still messy, you haven't learned how to do it. And this this kind of reminds me of painting, you know, the, the whole brush economy, the whole minimalist approach. I think it's really cool. Again, but if you're not careful, you're you're gonna you gotta try to put the cart before the horse, in other words. Like, there's this artist who I love. He knows how to use uh, brush economy really well. His name is Jeremy Lipkin. He's a, he's a, he's one of those, he's just one of those great artists out there who's, who's really doing something. I, 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 I love art. I love watching new artists and, and I love seeing the quality, not just of their work, because anyone can produce quality. It's just give them enough time, they'll produce quality. I love to see artists who produce quality, quantity, and who, and who do it in speed. And Jeremy Lipking is one of those guys, one of those few rare artists who can, who can create with speed and, and, uh, and do that kind of thing. I'm sort of a fan. <laughs> But that's a good example. You guys want to learn about brush economy? Jeremy Lipkin is a good example of brush economy. There's another uh, plein air artist out there who also knows how to use brush economy really well and uses a lot of paint. His name is Kyle Buckland. He's, uh, he's from Virginia. Uh, we, became, uh, we became buddies after a while. We, we, we used to sell sell artwork in the same platforms. This is, uh, he's, one of, he's one of the few artists that I actually believe that he's got what it takes. It's just that good. He produces work, he produces quantity. He's not, he's not, he's not the type of artist who, who just produces a, a single piece here and there. And, and I don't know, I guess he's blessed by the gods. He's really good. So. That's another example. His name is Kyle Buckland. I don't know if he's on Instagram, but he's, he's, he's just a great artist. I'm always, uh, I'm always in awe of his work. And try to see him paint when you get a chance. You know, go check out his YouTube. Try to see him paint and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He keeps moving. He doesn't stop. I think it's a mark of a good painter. I have to say that, right? Because that's what I'm doing. Someone told me the other day that I overworked the art, the, the paintings. Uh, I would, I would think that you're right, but sometimes overworking the painting is a good deal. The reason why it's because you're getting your groove. I found I've, I've talked to a couple of actors and musicians, and and they seem to to fall under the same spell of artist block. One way to get out of that is to overwork something. You want to overwork it. I don't know, put a lot of hours into a piece or, 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 or do many pieces or whatever, whatever you do, but you just start breaking the, the, 
you start breaking the back of that. The, the great uh, marketer, what's his name? Uh, the great, and I forgot his name, right? Uh, I've talked to you guys about it before. Gary Halbert used to say that he never had writer's block. All he did was just start writing, and, and he would even write, I don't, I don't want to write, I don't know what to write, but he kept writing. You know, who else said that? Picasso said that too. He said, I believe in inspiration, but it has to find you working. It doesn't, it doesn't work if you don't keep moving. That's the lesson for today, I guess. Keep moving. Even if you don't feel like you're doing well, even if you don't feel like you know what you're doing, if you stop, you'll definitely, you'll definitely uh, go the opposite way. So it's better to do the quote unquote wrong thing. It's better to do the, 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 the wrong approach, I guess, if you want to call it that, than to stop. Because if you, if you stop, you're, 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 not gonna, you're not gonna be able to, to adjust. So the whole point is that you want to adjust. How many, for how many paintings will you keep the same paint on your palette? Uh, uh, Surf Terra is asking, uh, are you Mexican? Someone else asked if I'm Mexican. Totally, dude. I'm totally Mexi. Muy macho. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it there as long as possible. I'll try to keep it as long as possible. <laughs> You're welcome, uh, Malohu Eranda. I hope I didn't butcher, butcher your name. Malo, Malohu Eranda. Thank you for your demonstration. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'll try to keep it there as long as possible. The palette gets really dirty. But when you're in flow, you're not looking for color anymore. This is, this is another little thing. When you're in flow, you're not looking for color anymore. You stop actually looking for color. When you, what I mean in flow is that you're, you're, you, you catch inertia. right? You catch, you catch momentum. So you're not looking for color anymore. What you're doing is you just... You're, it's, it's almost like... You guys, you guys seen that... The, well, I have a 10-year-old, so... That Lego movie. <laughs> He's a... Uh, I guess the, 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 the main guy, he, he finds out that, that he had it all along. And he's, he's spoiler alert, uh, he puts together all the Lego pieces without really thinking about it. That's really, that's really the place you want to get to. But, but getting to that place is going to take maybe a couple of days, maybe three days, five days of working nonstop. And then, and then you, you get into that place that some uh, spiritual gurus call it right action. And it's just uh, action without thinking. It's a very Zen approach. It's action without thinking. The moment that you start thinking, you lose it. You lose it, and and and, and you have to gain it back again. You know, it's a very it's a very very interesting thing. Almost, I would I would say it's almost it's almost spiritual. Uh, but you know, it depends on on how you want to approach it. The way I like to approach it is to is to have a target, like, okay, I'm gonna paint this, right, this sky or whatever. So, because some people, some people get this wrong, they think that I don't have a target. I, I do have a target. I'm gonna paint the marshland, or I'm gonna paint the sky, or I'm gonna paint whatever, right? That's the target. And then I just lose, I just drop everything. I, 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 and it's not easy, it takes, it takes momentum to do it, but I drop all expectation. Because the moment, the moment I want it to look like something, maybe like a photograph, or like an idea I have in my mind, that's the worst. Uh, an idea in your mind is worse than a photograph. An idea in your mind is it's, it's really the killer because you're trying to match something, right? You're trying to match a, 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 a utopian fantasy. It's, 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 not, it's not real, right? It's not real. It's just, just something that, it, it's a feeling. You're trying to match a feeling and you can never match feelings. You're, you can never match feelings. We're, we're addicted to trying to match feelings, right? Oh, I want to listen to that song again because it reminds me of, you know, this or that. And, and, and this is how we spend a lot of times trying to just match feelings. So in painting, it works very much the same way. You're, you're, if you try to match an idea in your mind, uh, investigate it. Because you might not be trying to match an idea, you might be trying to match a feeling. And that's the worst one. This is why Dali wrote about it and said, don't, don't aim for perfectionism. He was talking about that. He wasn't talking about 
hyper realism or, or or you know styles or any shit like that. He was talking about the idea that you have of yourself or of your artwork in your mind. He's like, don't reach, don't try to reach for perfectionism. You'll never achieve it. Of course, you can't achieve it. If it's in the mind, you're never going to be able to achieve it because it's a it, it, it comes and goes, right? It's a feeling. It just comes and goes. Man, I made this demonstration all fucking esoteric. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, guys. So, oh, thank you. Your name is Candela Aranda. Candela. Candela, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the awesome vibes. So I'm against a Germany in soccer? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's been so long since I got into, been into sports. I think I, I, I went into sports by default. I'm not, I'm not really a, a sports guy. So I, I heard that Mexico won, right? Uh, against Germany. I don't know if... Uh, see, I don't even have uh, the data on that because I don't, I don't watch none of that. I'd go to a soccer game, but I'd go for a beer. I wouldn't go for the soccer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and and that's, that's any sport. That's not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be biased against okay? soccer. Any, any sport. I'm not a sports person. Maybe maybe I should be a sports person. I don't know. Go uh, check out some. I definitely need some sort of sport in my life. I know that, but I'm not I'm not interested in the thing. My siblings are into uh, boxing. My brothers are all into boxing. Some of them are into soccer, but mainly boxing. Boxing is boxing and soccer is big in Guadalajara. There's a little. There was always that fear, you know, getting to a, a little fight and, 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 and a little fist fight in Mexico, because you know, uh, five out of ten guys know how to box, so. <laughs> All right, guys, so there it is. Uh, I want to let you know something, guys. This painting is going to be auctioned. Here's my, here's my pitch, because, you know, I've told you guys, those of you who are into selling, into getting your work out there, you got to pitch your work. Come on, guys. This uh, painting is going to be at auction, no reserve. It's going to be on my eBay uh, shop. So those of you who are interested and want part of it, Go uh, check it out by clicking the link in the profile. I think it measures about 24, 24 inches. It's a square 24 inches. I think. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But it's a mixture of palette knife and brush. And it does come with a certificate of authenticity. If you, Those of you who don't believe that I was painting it here live. And it's got a lot of impasto. Those of you who like the, the 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 cool the cool names, right? Instead of texture, let's call it impasto. It sounds cooler. So it's a simple it's a simple composition. Uh, I was gonna do an S composition, but this this is this is good enough. You know, it's not quite. It's just kind of it takes us kind of. Not quite, but it just, there we go, right there. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate all the awesome vibes. Take care. And uh, by the way, if you guys haven't seen the, the other uh, videos on, on marshlands, those of you who, who like to paint marshlands and whatnot, I have over a thousand videos on YouTube where I show how to paint marshlands and different stuff. So uh, if you're interested, go check those out as well. Take care. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.